Hi ladies and gentlemen, we are here to do a final mini review of Photoshop as it pertains to the work that you're doing for the GRA 101 and how to work on your final project. Now part of the challenge to this final project is that you're being given files that have already been created by a designer on the outside. You are welcome to create your own posters, but for those of you who are feeling comfortable um, just moving what exists around and making it fit a lot of the specifications for the course, that is an option. So we are going to look at two, fold, two images. We have two radio lab projects. One is the study in color and the other is the study in music. And you've been given a series of layers to work with for each one of those. And so I have them here up for you to look at. Now, again, like I said, if you're feeling most comfortable dealing with Photoshop uh, based on what is here, the final project can be rendered just based on what we have available to you. If you would like to try and create your own, you're going to be creating a poster that's 18 by 24 inches at 300 dpi, CMYK color set, and you're also going to be um, needing to have a few elements that you'll see in these posters. Let me show you. You'll be receiving the poster and it'll look like this, which means you don't have the few full view. Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to click these two buttons in my top, auto select, and that's going to allow me to move elements the way I want to. So I could decide that I want to have the full poster have a backdrop that looks like this, or I could decide that I want to have it look like this. And then let's start finding other things it has. So you could come through and you could go layer by layer to first familiarize yourself with what it is that's a part of this project. Now I've noticed already that the way this poster design is created, I want to add it so that it has a little bit more color. So I'm adding a new layer at the bottom and I'm going to drop in color with my paint bucket tool and I'm just going to load it down there. That's already going to help me establish a sense of um, balance to the composition while not being exactly half and half. You're dealing with the power of thirds there and I think that that's already made a little bit more of a dynamic piece for us. Now Radiolab is the title in here so I'm going to highlight this. If it's hard to grab, which sometimes it is, making sure again that your auto select is on, then you can come up here and you can um, grab it and see what you've got. Also, auto select does make it difficult sometimes to grab things. So just, if you notice that's annoying to you, you can come up over here to your layers palette and push that lock. That lock will make it so that when you touch that thing, you will not be able to move it. It'll be locked. Okay, so I'm going to come to the word colors. And that is just, it's too tricky to grab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, arrows on my keyboard to get the word colors over. And I'm going to bring that up. Also the word presents. Let's see if I can grab that and bring that up. And similarly, each one of these is little bits of information. So as you arrange them, part of the project that you have here is you may need to be resizing the font size. You may be needing to change the color. You may be needing to just relocate things in order to make the project more dynamic. It's up to you. But whatever you decide, we are interested in you showing us your expertise in terms of how do you deal with the notion of balance and composition, rhythm, color, um, and type and hierarchy with type? So let's see, I'm going to push return to set that into place, or I can do the check mark. This one sets it, says that I didn't do it correctly, I don't want to do that setting. So I'm going to come back, rearrange that, push OK, and then bring this butterfly up higher perhaps. Um, so playing with each one of these, very important. Um, and I will say down here, if we zoom in, so I'm using my hotkeys, which is Command Plus on a Mac or Control Plus on a PC, what we have done is, is we're using this particular text that's a summary from the website, the radiolab.org website. And what you can do is you're using that, te that text to look like radio, um, what do you call it, um, the credits for a movie poster. Now, uh, in this particular case, we're using the summary they gave us to look like those credits. Right now, though, this font that I'm using does not look like the Radio Lab, or excuse me, a movie poster uh, font. So what I encourage you to do is go to, let's go to, um, hmm, let's see. You're going to go to a font here that's called Steel Tongs. I know that sounds very strange, but here it is, steeltongs.font, and it's going to be right in here. You can get it off the web for free, and this particular font has been used for movie posters 
and uh, TV alike. I'm going to be downloading that to my desktop. So for us PC and Mac people, we both have access to that. And I'm going to double click it and open the zip file that showed up on my desktop, which you can't see at this moment. That's taking a moment. Now, for us Mac people, the way we add a font is, is you go to the application called Font Book. And you come into here and you go to File, Add Fonts. You get to see my desktop. What fun! And you're going to come down to Steel Tongs and select that Steel Tongs TTF. TTF signifies that it's a true type font. If it was an OTF, which is an open type font, that would be better for print based things. Okay, true type font was originally designed to be for um, uh, for web based projects only. Okay, so apparently. My computer's going slowly on me. Okay, so we have this text here. We've had the steel tongue fonts there that we were using. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to come in here. The steel tongue fonts have now been added to my computer. I make sure that the type is selected and I come down to steel tongs. What's going to happen is it's going to make all of the font that I had selected into steel tongs. So I'm going to come down, change that. Now one thing that's very particular about this font that's rather frustrating, you'll notice, is that if you have a font that is um, got capitals and lowercases, it's not going to look this way. It's got a funny built-in funkiness to it. So to get around that, what you can do is you can come up under Window and go to, um, you know what, I am dealing with CS 5.5, you guys are mostly dealing with CS 6, you would come down to type. And for those of us who are not dealing with type, we have a funny title area we need to go to. Character. Okay, so under character, you'll notice that if you have it selected for Sometimes it'll show more options right here in your drop-down menu, and it wouldn't show all of these. But as long as I have the TT selected, which is all caps, it'll show it to me correctly. Lowercase, notice this is what it looks like, and it has special effects by, written by. So if you do TT, then it's all capitals, and it's the way we want it to look. Okay, so finally, we've decided this goes great. We love how it's looking. We're going to do a file, save as, of course, or save, for that matter or save as because I have it saved already something and we're going to just make sure that we save it safely into the folder that we're working on. We also want to make sure that once we've done a save we can do a save as and we're going to save it as a JPEG file to show our classmates and you could do a save there to our desktop or our thumb drive or our folder that we've made and then finally for grading you do want to save it as a PDF. Photoshop PDF is fine and that would be how you submit it. Okay I hope that helped in terms of organization and understanding of this document. Um, I think too that we'll leave it at that. The only other thing I will say very quickly is in terms of playing with color that is a whole different and exciting world of Photoshop. But one thing that we can do that's really fun and quick is if you come up under image adjustments and you come into this area there's a lot of color alterations. The quick and dirty would be a few of these like hue saturation where it allows you to make subtle shifts to something but they're a little less in our control. It's a little bit more fun. If you're interested in going deeply into a graphic and making changes very specifically then you want to go to what is called selective color and this particular window, this is the heart and soul of making minor color alterations in Photoshop. This will give you the opportunity to make subtle changes to the yellows of a particular color through the settings of the CMYK specifically. So you can make, if you look at my, my yellows over here, only slight changes are happening based on how much magenta is in that yellow, how much yellow is in that yellow, how much black or white is in that yellow. So it's something that for those of us who say, I'm learning Photoshop, I'm not quite sure how to deal with um, color alterations, this is the place to make those great changes. Other more uh, large sweeping changes, exposure as it relates to camera, vibrance, which brings a lot of, of brightness to something, um, 
And then selective color is also an area where you can try and select just the red, oops, excuse me, not selective color, the replace color function, where let's say I wanna change just the red. I'm gonna hold down shift so I can get every subtle, slight variation of that red. And then I could come in here and I can make a change to that color only. And it will either make that really bright or very dull. Mind you, when you drop the saturation of any color, it goes to the grayscale. Bring a lightness to one color, it's gonna go white. No lightness goes to black. And notice I didn't get all the range of red in there because you still have a, 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 an outline. But those are some great areas for dealing with color play and enjoy that because I think it'll bring a lot to it. There's a lot more in here to do, but those are the great hints of the range of immediate color alterations as well as really particular, so large reaching in particular. Okay, I hope this is helpful. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.